Hello everyone, this is Stockholm 3 d and uh, today's lesson will be on um, how to create a rig that will allow you to uh, create a horse and carriage and follow the terrain properly even though the terrain is very rough. So uh, let's get started because uh, there's quite a lot of things you gotta do in order to make that work. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a brand new project. I like to work on a widescreen as you know already if you if you have by the way if you haven't taken my uh, intro classes my free intro classes I suggest you watch them first because I'm not gonna go through the hotkeys and stuff because uh, we don't have time for that this is just to show uh, people how you can create the rig and it's, a, it's an intermediate to advanced class so uh, I would suggest watching those uh, uh, free tutorials first and uh, then watch this and then you'll you'll feel more at home when you when you see what I'm doing here okay so again let's get started I'm gonna go for an empty wide and um, here's my uh, playground or my preview screen uh, as the proper term would be and um, as you notice I stowed uh, these uh, side menus uh, just to get better screen real estate uh, but you don't have to do that um, I will keep this uh, as we work so you can see which menus I'm using and so forth so the first thing we gotta do is load a rough terrain so I'm gonna go to my set terrains and um, I like to use this uh, uh, rally um, track uh, terrain because it's very rough uh, I mean you can use something that you already have you may not have this because uh, uh, this came with a, a iCar pack uh, you don't have to use this you can use any terrain you wish or you can even make your own terrains uh, with um, one of the nature building sets uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and use this because I already have it it's easy to use and so forth so let's move over here and uh, you'll notice I'm moving I'm zooming out really fast uh, I'm using the shift key to do that whatever whatever you do if you had the shift shift key is a times 10 uh, increase in speed so notice here the shift key is not there now I press the shift key notice how much faster I can move um, again like I said this is not about the hotkeys or about the interface it's about how to create that rig so we are gonna get moving here so the next step we gotta do here is create a, create a path uh, for the uh, carriage to follow this is very important because if we don't then the simulation is not going to be very accurate so uh, the path must be made so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go go to animation here I'm gonna go path and then create path and I'm gonna go ahead and start clicking here and uh, create the path make sure that go I go through dunes and hills and stuff like that just so you can see that uh, this technique actually works really well um, and, and, in, and you can see that I'm not trying to cheat and go through the smooth areas I'm actually trying to force it to take uh, the hard areas to to get through so uh, let's see let's go through here I'm gonna go one over here and maybe one crazy one over here of course this wouldn't happen in reality you wouldn't go up this hill uh, but I'll show you that it is possible to do so so I'm gonna go ahead and just click in here here and here for the last key right there alright so I'm gonna press escape key right now so there we go we're going th up and down through really some really crazy hills um, and the next step we're gonna do here is and going to project the path right here this little uh, check mark click on that and what this will do is it will project the path onto the terrain so see how it hugs the terrain goes up and down and down the hills so this gives you a pretty accurate uh, um, path so that there will be less intersections of the geometry onto the terrain so this is very important uh, you can increase the accuracy by with by using the slider I mean I'm, I'm gonna go up to 90 percent accuracy and uh, there you go you will notice that it is slightly a little more accurate than 80 percent obviously and uh, we'll leave it at that we don't have to go hundred percent though you can a uh, hundred percent I notice it takes a long time to calculate the projection so I'm gonna skip that you can do it you know if you you know once you have the time to create your project so uh, the next thing you gotta do is uh, we're, we gotta bring some objects to follow the path so um, there are several choices that you got uh, you could use either if you don't have the uh, car kit which I believe is um, uh, I'm talking about the uh, mechanical kit 
right here. It's called Mechanic Toolkit. If you don't have this, I believe it's available for free at the website, Realism website. Um, I'm going to use these guys. You don't have to use them. I just use them because they have a little bit of dynamic on the on the suspension part of it. Um, but if you don't have that, you can always use the vehicle dummy uh, types and uh, use the car one. So um, that's just an option if you don't ha if you don't happen to have that particular um, mechanical toolkit. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to use soft springs and I and I'm going to go ahead and start putting stuff onto the terrain. Um, one thing I notice you notice here because we're so so zoomed out is that my model is just floating mid air uh really really um really far away from the terrain so I'm gonna go ahead and using my shift key again and my move key I'm gonna make sure up oh, there we go we go right through the terrain now that I'm over the terrain I'm gonna go ahead and click on follow terrain this will guarantee that my model will slide I'm gonna go ahead and get close to it so you can see what I'm doing. Um, again, I'm not going to go through hotkeys. If you want to learn hotkeys, uh, go ahead and take a look at my intro, intro tutorials. Uh, if you really want to go in depth in iClone and want to uh, speed up your learning curve, then uh, I would also recommend you actually uh, purchasing my uh, my bundle tutorial, which includes modeling, texture, lighting, and animation. Um, so. Uh, but uh, if you want to just get started and just get the bearings of it, uh, the intro will get you just as just as far. So um, uh, to do the whatever you you need to do here, so uh, it it'll be fine. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and place this little guy in here right in front of my path, and um, I will do the same thing uh, three times, and I will show you why in a second. So now we're gonna put this over there. I'm gonna bring one more one more over here and we're gonna put that over there so why are we doing this for alright well basically what I wanna create is this kind of uh, uh, train like motion to start with uh, where they all they will all follow the path uh, at the same rate of speed that's very important because if you have uh, uh, different rates of speed this technique is not gonna work so by the way you can actually uh, you don't all, you don't have to do it this way. You can actually attach them to the path first, and then set them at different positions on the path if you want to. If you want to have more control over the speed of the of these little gadgets, uh, I'm gonna do it this way just because. So we gotta move along. It's Mother's Day. I gotta spend it with my family. So I'm just gonna just throw this out there and uh, let you have fun with it. The you're gonna find out there is a million combinations you're gonna be able to do once you figure out how I'm doing this and you're gonna have a lot of fun so let's keep them moving here okay so let's go over here uh, they're pretty lined up uh, we're gonna have to line them up a little bit better later on um, once we load the actual objects we want the the um, to follow the path properly and I'm gonna have a carriage here that I made um, let's see this is my little trailer uh, slash wagon, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I called it trailer because that was the original topic in our conversation in the other forum. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this little guy. This guy came with one of the uh, medieval packs, I believe, the the city one. Um, you can use whatever you want to use. This is just an example on how to get things lined up properly. So uh, notice here. I am going to select the spring and I'm going to make sure that it goes right below the axle of the carriage, very important uh, for the following of the path. So uh, how is this going to help us? Alright, so uh, step number one, we are going to make sure that all our springs follow the path properly. So uh, we will go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and right click on it and tell it to move actually before I do that well actually let's, let's, let's just go ahead and do it it doesn't matter it, it's not gonna have enough frames to follow through the entire path but it will be good enough for you to guys uh, well let's add a few more frames um, I wanna make sure you, we go all the way through those little um, humps uh, on the terrain so I'm gonna go ahead and tell it give me I don't know for, let's give myself 4,000 frames and see how far we go with this. I'm going to go there. Okay, now I'm going to right click, move forward, 
and I'm going to tell it to go, follow the path. Notice the carriage here came in anim with animated wheels. Uh, this I did on purpose because I don't want to animate every time I bring in the carriage. Um, uh, it will not stop when the springs stop. If you want to do that, you're going to have to use the, the instructions from the uh, toolkit, mechanical toolkit, and um, add the, uh, the tires that came with it. So that way it will correspond to the stop and goes of the, the, the actual uh, soft body spring. So uh, right now, we, I press, by the way, I pressed the F7 key so that you can s we're following the camera. Uh, we're following the spring with the follow cam. Okay, there the simulation stopped. Now we got to do the same thing <clears throat> here with uh, the other springs. Um, I want to select that one, and we're still in follow cam, so that's why it snapped so abruptly. But it will still follow the. Uh, notice here that as we follow the path, the distance stay constant. This is very important once you start doing those kind of links, uh, uh, especially when we go from the horse to the carriage. You want you don't want too much stretching going on because otherwise. Uh, you would have to create an even more complicated rig. So right now everything is in line, everything is following the way it should and uh, technically with this we can do the horse and carriage situation but the carriage itself or the wagon would not follow the path properly. It would rotate, it will go up and down but you'll notice that the rear wheel it will uh, uh, like bury itself into the ground. So I'm going to stop there the simulation and I'm going to do the same thing with this bottom one over here. Um, uh, I'd, by now probably what are saying, you know, you're asking yourself what the hell is he doing? Uh, trust me, we got to do this, it's important. Um, and you got to let it do the whole simulation because uh, if you don't then uh, one of the springs will stop at whatever time you stop the simulation. So we want to go through the entire path. So, so we got to do this. Um, we can and don't and don't worry if we have to tweak it. We can always redo it afterwards. I just want to show you here um, the concept behind uh, how this uh, um, rigging works. So I'm gonna let it go until the first one stops on the path, and then we'll stop the simulation right there. So this one reached the path right there and stop. All right, that's good. I'm gonna go back to my first frame and. Um, for now, I'm going to go ahead and move my carriage out of the way here, and I am going to go ahead and bring in. <clears throat> uh, actually, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. Let's undo that, and I'm going. I'm going to show you what would happen if you actually uh, parent this, attach this to the uh, this one over here. I'm going to go ahead and follow. Press F7 to follow it. So notice, I'm going to go more sideways. So it follows the path pretty good, but see how this wheel over here sometimes goes inside the terrain, and so that's the bottom wheel. Uh, especially on the sharpest turns, uh, it will, you will get these dips and stuff that um, they, 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 they don't look like they quite correspond to the hill that they're going over. So. Uh, how can we uh, fix this? Uh, and this is what the, this rig is all about: how to fix that problem and have it follow properly. So that's no, uh, that works, but it doesn't work as good as it could. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, went to the first frame. I'm going to go ahead and detach uh, that attachment I did from the carriage to this over here. And um, and now what I'm going to do is. Uh, the secret to the point link constraint and this is by using actually uh, a character and I'm going to use the clone bones because uh, they have the least amount of polygons uh, hopefully one day um, <clears throat> Reolution will be able to make uh, a low poly version of the follow I mean of the um, of a rig that uh, allows you to use the follow uh, look at function because look at function is what we're looking for here to create the proper rig. Now uh, that crazy snap is because I actually had it um, had my uh, um, my follow cam on when I loaded the model, the the the, the skeleton. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, here I'm gonna move my little skeleton here uh, so we can place put it in place. 
and I'm using the shift key to move him around fast and then I'm gonna go ahead and just move it over here alright so there are a couple of things I need to do A I need to align the skeleton to the spring so they are perpendicular to each other like so that looks pretty good and I'll move it a little bit over there that looks good now I'm gonna take the follow terrain off so I can move my skeleton uh, downwards a little bit so it, was, it will be about uh, oh, I selected the wrong let's move this upwards again and uh, we're gonna have to move this uh, follow terrain there we go okay we're gonna have to redo the simulation again because I just uh, messed it up a little bit um, now let me select the skeleton again there we go and now we want to get this follow terrain off and nope that's not what I want I want the skeleton there we go and now we want to move the head because the look at function works with the head the head the head will move to whatever you want to look at so this is what's going to what creates the magic of the point constraint and this is the secret behind the whole technique um, so what you do here basically is um, here is where the axle is and I'm going to go ahead and select this and move it a little bit more this way like so that looks good and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select this guy actually and move it a little further back and uh, actually I need to select the follow terrain also very important there we go so we got it there make sure that is the is right at the pivoting point of the spring as well as the axle there we go follow there alright we're good alright good so this is what we have to do we need to I'm gonna bring in a prop a simple prop like a cube uh, it doesn't matter uh, what sh shape you bring in I just use a cube because it has the least amount of polygons you could bring it like a surface plane but the cube is much easier to grab so I'm just gonna use a cube instead I'm gonna go ahead and just scale it down again if you want to learn how I'm moving around and all this um, uh, I, I suggest you go ahead and uh, uh, watch my free introduction tutorial uh, this will show you how it is that I am moving around this interface so quickly and efficiently um, uh, hint hotkeys big fan of hotkeys here so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move this at the axle I'm gonna try to put it right there in the middle of the axle because this is gonna be our look at point why do we need that you will see in a second so here we go uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my character here you can even select it here or you can just select it through here um, I'm gonna select this character and uh, I'm gonna tell it to pick a target to look at and I'm gonna tell it the target is gonna be the box alright so now we know that the head is gonna be looking at the box no matter what rotation is at no matter which angle is at the next thing we're going to do here is I am going to select the skeleton which is already selected and I am going to link it to the spring now why the spring and not the bottom part because the spring actually has a cushion action that goes up and down smoothly and this will create uh, a smoother motion for the carriage now I'm gonna go ahead and pick my carriage and um, I am going to tell it to uh, follow to uh, I'm gonna link the carriage to the head so I'm gonna go ahead and tell it uh, to attach it to the head so how do we do this uh, we can uh, right click on it and say attach and click in there let's see if we grab the head yeah we grab the head right there so perfect so now what's gonna happen is if I rotate the head of the dummy uh, the carriage will rotate with it 
and uh, next step I gotta do is select this little guy over here and attach this to this uh, spring right there and don't forget we gotta redo the simulation here so I'm gonna right click on it tell it to move and follow path right there and right now you can see how the carriage moves up and down following the terrain properly uh, I noticed that right now uh, the um, I'm gonna stop and redo this I need to redo the simulation uh, notice that how the the wheels went a little bit inside the um, uh, the terrain that's because it started off that way so what we want to do is move it upwards a little bit on the initial so they they're not touching the ground and um, okay so now we're good to go I'm gonna select the spring again and gonna redo the simulation for the spring move forward follow path I'm gonna press F7 to follow the carriage so there we go so now it's going up and down following the terrain there notice how it goes up and down and it, it, uh, it prevents it from going into the ground a lot so uh, this is a good method right there to uh, <clears throat> uh, to create uh, you know this follow terrain in a, in a more accurate way of course it's not going to be perfect but uh, you can uh, I mean you you can tweak up the skeleton a little higher too so that uh, the front wheel it looks like the front wheel is still going a little bit into the ground uh, one way you can stop that is again you can actually raise the uh, the skeleton so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just raise the skeleton I'm gonna select the skeleton here right there and uh, it just snapped there because I was using the my follow cam and um, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and move this guy control Q uh, a little higher there we go maybe a little bit more make sure that it's not floating too much alright so right now technically that should have worked uh, let's let's see what happens test it out there we go see ya less intersection now so that's what we need we needed to raise this a little bit higher uh, if it still goes through you can uh, you can bring it up a little bit more um, and uh, just tweak it until you get it you know perfect and uh, of course it's not gonna be perfect perfect but it'll be close enough um, so this is step number one and uh, basically what you have here is a point constraint because uh, basically what, what, what's happening here is and I keep saying this word basically so so many times it's beginning to bug me uh, but uh, sorry about that uh, but uh, it works this is how you follow the terrain uh, uh, pretty accurately um, so what's next well let's bring out the horse right so we're gonna bring the horse in here and I'll show you how to do the reins that goes from the horse to the carriage and uh, it's based basically on the <laughs> on the same uh, technique uh, except this is a, a two-point link where uh, I'll show you instead of just talking I'll just show you let's go ahead and go get a horse I'm gonna use the one from the um, horse and tack you can use uh, the ones that came default to like the, uh, the Arabian horse it will work just as well uh, it's on, based on the same principle so it, sh it will work just fine I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring the horse in and there of course we have follow cam so it snapped to the center of the world and uh, that's not what we want so now I'm gonna go ahead and move the horse where are you horsey there we go there's the horsey and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of this mode of the follow cam mode and I'm gonna bring him up and uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to snap the terrain follow the terrain so now when I move it I know all four legs are on the ground properly set up I'm gonna put it on top of this string over here the spring not the string and um, here we go like so and uh, we need to move him a little bit more towards the center I think we got a good good thing going on here this is good we put it about there 
And now let's bring it more centered to the. Uh, this needs to be parallel to the spring. And uh, I will go ahead and link this to the um, either to the spring or the root. Doesn't really matter for the horse itself. And um, now I will go ahead and go to the animation tab and what you want to do here is use the motions that are are made where the horse moves on the same spot and cause our driver for the forward motion is going to be the spring so is that's necessary so I'm going to go ahead and do that horse motion farm move canter and I'm going to go start cantering right there so double click that so it will start cantering and it will stop at that point right there very good and uh, before and then we go uh, canter to follow the motion after start cantering very good now I'm going to press the F, F3 key and to bring me so it brings me to the uh, timeline I'm going to go to motions here are my two motions that are created I'm going to go ahead and select this guy and I'm going to loop this so it just canters all the way across the animation so now if I press the follow cam here we should have a horse of course and uh, I'm gonna play the animation so he goes up and down the hill and the carriage follows through like the way it should there we go like that so that works good so uh, notice one of the reasons why I want it to be lined up with the um, spring is because at this point over here you notice that he's cantering in the air right there so if if we if the horse was aligned properly with the uh, spring this wouldn't have happened so let's go to the beginning of the animation here and uh, slide him back I'm in follow cam let's undo that let's see where's my horse let's see the loops still there and the horse still selected I'm gonna press uh, um, F5 and now I will go ahead and move the horse uh, get follow terrain off and do this so now when I do the animation there we go that should do it I'm gonna press F7 for follow cam now we need to uh, readjust the camera here and select that I'm going to select this guy now and uh, let's start from the beginning here uh, something went quirky with the camera unfortunately uh, select this F full cam. Hmm. Something broke in the rig. Wow. Okay. Well, um, not the rig itself, but the follow cam doesn't something snapped out of there. There we go. Now it's working again. Uh, so we're the horse is following properly the terrain. Uh, it's not floating. It's bending, rotating as it should, and uh, we are good to go here. So uh, our next test, uh, our next thing here, will be to link the rein of the horse going towards the uh, carriage, so that it looks like it's actually pulling it. So let's go to the beginning here, and to do this, we're going to use the same technique as the same point constraint technique, and this requires an actor. So it's, we're going to go to clone bones and select this guy over here and of course I left it in follow cam which I didn't want to and I am gonna go ahead and see if I can bring this guy here like that okay that's good there's my guy right there and now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna line him up to the point where I want the uh, the rain or whatever you want to call it uh, to create the illusion that is pulling so this is good now I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a couple of models here um, 
to uh, to create the geometry that will create this ring or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the proper term. Sorry about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring in a box, and um, I am going to uh, rotate it 90 degrees, and uh, I am going to start scaling this. And um, after that, I am going to go ahead and move it this way, like so, and then move it upwards, and move it this way. And I am going to scale it this way. So this is where it's going to create the connection of the pulling, like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and just move it towards where the head is to create the proper rotation. Um, scale this a little bit better. There we go, like that. And maybe scale it a little bit more. Now I'm going to show you what happens if you just create one point constraint. And it's very important for you to see this because. Um, it's gonna give me a, the reason why I would want. Whoop, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and just pressing the control key. I'm gonna move it to create a duplicate of this object like that, and uh, you will see why later on. Uh, right now, I'm gonna rotate this uh, 180. And this should be at 270 rotation. And yeah, doesn't matter, so we'll put it there. And uh, go like that, like this. For now, we'll leave it like that. And then you will see what I'm talking about later on. So uh, now that we have this model, uh, I'm just going to shift it away. And I'm going to stick with this model right now. And I'm going to create the link like uh, I had it. Um, all right, actually, let's do that, like this. Actually, let's keep it straight first, as straight as we can. 90, 90. Okay, uh, it doesn't really matter. We can cheat it a little bit. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in another object uh, to look at, and uh, and then attach it to the carriage. So I'm just going to bring in another cube here. Uh, technically, I guess I could just grab this guy and just duplicate this and uh, scale it, rescale it. There we go, like that, and like that. It needs to be small. The orientation doesn't really matter here. What's what's really important, actually, well, let's just do a reset and then just move it back here. By doing the reset, he sent it to the center of the world. That's why it disappeared all of a sudden. Uh, nothing to panic about. I just move it back on here. Um, let's go ahead and move this guy over here. Uh, you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Basically, I am just uh, creating a point of interest for the uh, head to look at while the horse is moving. So that's the important part. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, attach this to uh, the carriage like so and um, I'm gonna hold while I'm here might as well just move it um, to this joint location right here why not and just hot uh, well first we're gonna tell the dummy to look at it and uh, I'm gonna select my uh, my little stick figure here there we go and tell it to pick a target to be this guy over here so it's the box. So now I'm going to go ahead and move the box and hide it inside that uh, place right there. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. I'm going to tell it to attach 
to the head. All right, so we have this attached to the head, and now I'm going to tell it to go ahead and um, in here uh, to use precision and rotation. This is gonna. There we go. So see how the the um, the slat is following straight from the head to the um, uh, look at point. So now let's uh, re-select the stick figure here. I'm going to move it up a little bit like that. Uh, uh, however, notice that as I move it, it's always looking at that particular point. Now, this is one of the things that I was uh, warning you about. What happens is, is when you reach a limit on your geometry, let's select the geometry here. I need to. I want to rescale it a little bit more uh, so that it's scaling the proper axis here. So I want it wider this way and thinner this way, like that. And let's go ahead and stretch it more towards there, so that it reaches all the way through. So what's going to happen here is the reason why I want this to have a dual link and not just a single link to this place is because once the horse starts moving uh, the length of the board is gonna have to change basically you're gonna have to keyframe it and that's extra work for you and that's something that you don't want to do you wanna keep this as automated as possible right so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select the, the dummy now and I'm going to tell it to link to the top horse of this horse so what do we have here we have a skeleton that's linked to the horse, a board that's attached to the head, and the head is looking at a pivoting point at, at the box that's hidden inside the carriage. So um, we just got to make sure, let's see, is is the box, yeah, the box is there. All right, so uh, fantastic. This is working just the way I want it. Um, now I'm going to show you the animation, and uh, this will work. The link will still there, will stay there, but notice that as the link moves up and down here, uh, it, it kind of breaks the joints and it breaks the illusion uh, of the um, of the effect that we want. So what we want to do here is two things. A, uh, we want to first let's select the object here. Uh, select the skeleton. I'm sorry. When I meant object is the skeleton and we got to tell it to follow it 100 percent this means there's no give this is like it, it will tell it to go straight to the cube no matter which angle it is so this will give us less play up and down but it will not allow us to um, see how the link is always perfectly up and down uh, but what it's not going to allow you to do is stretch the board because you see how see on that on that hill right there how the board uh, did not reach all the way to this target. This is what I'm talking about. You would have to animate this in order to keep it always here, and the animation is not going to be very accurate. So how do we solve this problem? Uh, the way I, th I I thought about doing this was using a, a dual link, meaning uh, using another dummy uh, to look from this point to this point over here. So let's go ahead and select another clone bone here and bring it in. And this time I'm going to press F, uh, F5 to go to preview cam so it doesn't snap to the center of the world because that was getting old. <laughs> All right, so we got the little skeleton over here. Now we're going to move him. Notice I'm going back and forth between gizmo mode and uh, standard move mode. Um, you can do this. Uh, it's up to you, you know, I feel more comfortable doing this, going back and forth, because for certain rotations and scaling, it's better to use the gizmo. For moving uh, in general and doing simple rotation, the all method is much faster. So, we got this going on here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a look at point. Uh, and since I want my look at point to look a little bit fancy, I'm going to go ahead and just bring in... Um, um, uh, this piece of hardware over here, I find it's kind of cool. Um, bring it in there kinda looks like a little gear thing going on um, it's not uh, <laughs> a timely piece but um, you know whatever whatever looks cool that's what I say if it looks cool it will work uh, okay so that's a little bit 
big <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and scale that down and uh, move it so that it looks like it's actually rotating it's, it's, it's making the board actually rotate on, on that axis and uh, maybe move it down a little bit oh it got deselected Select that piece. Alrighty. Come on. Mm. I'm going to select that, press F, and now uh, we'll go back in here. Okay, right now it's having a hard time selecting between the skeleton and the piece of geometry because they're overlapping and since the skeleton has a bigger bounding box, it's selecting the skeleton all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze the skeleton now and I'm going to select that piece now by itself. There we go. See, now I can select the piece and uh, move it around again like I was planning to. Over here. That will leave for move. There we go. Maybe down a down a little bit oh I got the horse selected that's not what I want leave the horse on the ground come on we are so close to be done here alright okay so we got the pivoting point correctly placed finally yeah well this kind of stuff happens guys don't get upset over it. Just get it done. So, uh, why did we put this over here? Because what I want now is I want to select this character over here and look at this target over there, right there. So, uh, the same thing. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select this board over here. Oh, I froze it, so I can't select it. I need to make sure that and freeze the selection mode over here alright select the board itself and um, alright so now if I go here that's the look at points correct now I'm gonna select the board and I'm using the gizmo mode because it allows me to scale in one axis I'm gonna go ahead and scale this about this big and maybe about this big alright so now I'm gonna go ahead and select this board over here and I am going to tell it to attach to the head of this mannequin right here alright very good and now I'm gonna tell it to align it to uh, position and rotation like so there we go so as you can see here make sure also that uh, the stick figure here is looking at 100% the target so they're lined up so now you have two boards that are looking at each other with precision now um, I'm gonna have to tweak a little bit this I'm gonna select the board first and I'm gonna scale it the right way so it kinda of follows the same as the other board in uh, scale there we go Note, you will notice that it's a little bit of offset. That's because uh, the look at target is correct, but the um, the skeleton here, the skeleton position is not. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move my guy here to the side so it lines up. Both boards line up the way I want to. There we go. So both boards here are lined up to each other, looking at each other. Uh, pretty much spot on so now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create uh, kinda like a simulation of uh, maybe two uh, um, stoppers uh, so that uh, when it, it contract it and, and it expands uh, my rig will uh, give the illusion that the boards are actually stopping uh, at, at that junction so because there you know there's a physical uh, geometry to stop them or physical uh, object that will stop them so uh, to do that I'm gonna go ahead and just select uh, um, again you don't have to go through this uh, this much detail this is stuff that I'm just throwing in there um, 
you can do whatever you wish this is just just to get you started you will find that once you get this going you'll be able to find so many permutations of this and so much fun to play with that uh, uh, <laughs> you, you lose track of time so I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees uh, this way so it to 70 this angle there we go and now I'm going to use my regular move mode here so that I can move this like so scale it down like so move it up go over here uh, up up sideways scale it down make sure that it fits on both covers both there we go like that there we go so this would be kinda like the stoppers uh, for the constraint you know it's, they're not real uh, you're just simulating that but hey whatever works right that's what I say if it works it, it works <laughs> so uh, we got one of them and this one will be the stopper for this board so what I'm going to do first I'm gonna create a duplicate of this and I'm gonna create one for this side over here for the other board again you don't have to do this this is just me uh, trying to be physically accurate even though it's not very accurate uh, as physically accurate as possible so that's that's fair to say so I'm gonna select this guy and I'm gonna tell it attach to this board and I'm gonna select this guy and I'm gonna tell it to attach to this board over here so once I have that going on let's see how this works out now I'm gonna select the horse press F7 to for the look at cam now take a look at the joints here as they move up and down Oh, <laughs> we forgot to link the body the stick figure to the carriage so I'm going to uh, link to carriage there we go alright now let's try that again select the horse I want to have this kind of view and oh <laughs> forgot one more thing we need to select this piece of geometry which is a look at point here our look at point and we need to attach this of course to the horse and one more time and this hopefully will be the last and here we go F7 alright now see the linkage so now the boards do not need to stretch so you don't have to animate that it looks like it works physically properly because the stoppers are there I mean you could have, you could have scaled that board so you lined up with the stoppers but uh, anyway uh, the, here you go here's your carriage you do the same thing for the other side and you got a perfect uh, horse and carriage pulling uh, you know riding along you know you can make them run you know do whatever you want and and it follows the train well this is it folks hope you enjoyed it uh, if you got what I you know this is a free tutorial uh, however if you use this technique or any der you know der derivative of this technique uh, or variation of this technique please uh, a little credit on your movies would be awesome or if not you can point them to my tutorials uh, page uh, that would be also very appreciated so I hope you enjoy and have a wonderful day bye bye